All right, so this is Melinda's physical two by two by two by two. It's a fully functional four dimensional puzzle, but it has limitations because we live in 3D space, but this is a four dimensional puzzle. So about a week ago, I got interested in what if the same thing could be applied to the normal two by two Rubik's cube. Just like we can build a three dimensional version of this four dimensional puzzle, can we build a two dimensional version of this three dimensional puzzle? So to answer this question, I made this. Okay, so the rules of this game is that uh, you have to keep it within a uh, two-dimensional space the entire time. So in this sort of projection of, of uh, this, this bad boy right here, the 2x2x2, uh, uh, two by two by two, um, so now we can rotate orange sides however we want in the 90 degrees um, perfectly, like all good. But how do we rotate the other sides? And this explains why we need like the gyro algorithm for the four dimensional cube. And that's like a sequence of illegal moves to rotate it in the other dimension to get to the other states. So, so what if I wanted to turn the blue side? Well, um, I could do something like this and then we'll bring the greens over here. And then it looks like I can just like rotate them. Is that right? So yeah, I guess in, um, in, in this 2D space, it's much easier to gyro. You kind of just rotate them and boom, there we go. We've rotated it. Now we can turn the blue side and the green side any way we want. All right, um, how do we turn the, uh, the white side? Um, oh, well that's easy. Well, we just rotate the white side to the center like this. And then we'll do the gyro. We can even only do like half a gyro, then turn the white side and then like um, ungyro it back sort of thing. Yeah, that looks like I turned the white side, right? Yeah, see, look, I've turned the white side. That's awesome. But let's do a full solve and I guess it'll show you why like it's so difficult to do um, the physical um, two by two by two by two puzzle. So how we scramble this basically is we tr move the left and right however we want, like randomly. And then basically you do like a U2 and then you bring it into the other state and then you just keep on repeating that process like over and over again. So let's just do that. Uh, we'll do an R2 here. Um, all right, so then let's do the U2. I think I can just literally do this for the U2. Yeah, so I have to keep it all within two dimensional space. If I go like this, that's illegal twisting. Um, and now I stack so I can move these left corners to the right, just like this. And now um, recenter the puzzle. But this is only like two moves away. It just doesn't look like it. Ah, huh, cool. All right, so that looks like a scramble. Let's solve this white. So we'll do this um, D2 move. Um, okay, well, we can rotate the white side, uh, this this side, just like this. We, what if we do that like uh, interesting half move? So like this and then recenter. Oh, which way do I recenter? This maybe? Hopefully I didn't do any corner twists. And then we'll turn this side again. Yeah, and now these are lined up. So then if I just do the same thing backwards and then realign, realign, boom, look, three corners, easy. Um, okay, and now uh, we can insert this corner by doing the thing. And then uh, realign, realign. Now that's there, and then, oh, it'd be cool if I could like find a way to do that. Um, like this? No, it's 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 twisted. Um, yeah, I think this will work. And then we'll and then we'll uh, go over, and then we'll refix the alignment, and then hopefully I can just turn this in. Um, and then, ah, and then go back, <laughs> um, fix the alignment, 
And boom, look at this, white side, easy peasy. Um, is this a valid case? Yes, it is. That's some sort of uh, T case on yellow, just like this. Let's see if we can do a technique that's similar to RKT. So I like to do it on the right, so I'll just move the right cell over here. <laughs> okay, um, well, let's, let's do the half gyro. And then that'll allow us to do an R. That didn't do what I thought it would do. <laughs> Uh, looks like we just have a soon case now, so let's try and do the soon. So yeah, so we have something like this now, I guess, maybe, perhaps? Okay, let's try it again. So then, R. And then U. And then R prime. And then another U and then an R, and then a U2. If these were magnetic, it would be so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, and then an R prime. Oh yes, oh yes, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> um, bada boom, and uh, bada bing, and come on, and uh, yes, we did it. <laughs> So yeah, now you can see that it's completely possible and that's kind of like why this thing works in three dimensions. Um, we have to keep it in three dimensions only. You can't like go like that or anything, but that would kind of be fun and cool maybe. Um, you have to use like illegal weird moves to access like the other hidden sides. And it's kind of just like a dimensional analogy, one dimension down of how this thing works. So now this is the orientation that we have it in. We have uh, blue on the top, we have green on the bottom, and then yellow is the left and white is the right, and then orange is like the inside in the, in the, in the second dimension, and red is the outside, except for us it just makes us, oh, this is front, this is back. But because of the projection here, we lose the front backness. So this kind of looks like the inside and this looks like the outside. So when we're seeing this, this is the outside and this is the inside. To us, it just looks that way, but in reality, it'll like it would make sense in our heads if we were four dimensional. But that's pretty much it. I'll leave a link to this template in the description below. If you want to print it out and chop it up and like solve it, then go do that. Go subscribe to my channel and don't forget to use my discount code Rowan to save five percent off at thecubicle.com and join our Hypercuber server. Link in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.